book writing is kind of like a typewriter. The move is pretty deep. The typewriter did was how women did the job in offices. Are you saying this for us, you know? Okay. Yes! <laughs> but you listen free, we see it. In 1868, Christopher Latham Schultz made a writing machine in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He presented the machine to Remington and Sons in 1873 and released it in 1874. Right now, Dr. Sifty is used to make cut the rulers. Touching cave Listen to me. But right time ago, he would the man. Nowadays, it's easy to switch from capitals to small letters, but typewriters did not always have the shift key. The first typewriter with a shift key was Remington number 2. 1878, Remington number 2 was the first keyboard with a shift key, and it was very successful. Here's what Remington number 2 looked like. In 1895, John Thomas Underwood went to Remington to renew his supplier contract and upon being rejected bought rights to Underwood's number 5 that typed from the front. Underwood looked like this. Followed by the IBM Selectric in 1960 which used a single element mechanism and was very successful. It looked like this. My tweet? He was the first body to buy a type machine. The first to submit a type novel to publisher. He hired professional typists to transcribe. Are you listening to the The first novel intent was Life in Mississippi. Life. By 1930, over 95% of typists were women, while they only made up 6% of bookkeepers, cashiers, and accountants. Valentino, did you know that 95% of typists were women? Did you know that all the other jobs, like bookkeepers and cashiers, only had Although women were dominating the typing industry rapidly, female employment was increasing quickly in all clerical occupations and its existence didn't create the opportunity. Instead, typewriters facilitated female entrance into the workforce. I once read a book called Evolution of the Typewriter. It argues that the typewriter enabled freedom and speed of expression without the need to sacrifice clarity and exactness. This also bridges the gap between oral and literate culture described by on because what is written can now be recorded or pronounced at almost the same speed as it could be said. Literacy may still structure the way that we speak, but it no longer slows down the process of communicating ideas as a result of the typewriter. Consequently, the typewriter increased the demand for literacy and the will to become literate. The book Gramophone, Film, Typewriter, makes a reference to an interesting remark regarding female typewriters by Elizabeth Forster of the University of Zurich. You sure read a lot of books, Jenny. Since I have a friend like you, I don't even need to go to the library. What does Mrs. Forster say? She claims that men very much appreciated having emancipated women of the time at universities and libraries as secretaries and assistants. First of all, they thought that men were better than women. But not, that's not true. They thought that girls should not be worried or get a lot of money because then she used the problem after they had babies. Even though men viewed typewriters and female literacy as a help to them, I wonder if such a movement also had an impact for women wishing to go beyond this role. Perhaps. Kittler even goes so far as to say that women working as typewriters often suffered breakup in their personal relationships or divorce. 
Such personal misfortune often resulted in successful careers as female authors and therefore a contribution to female literacy through positive role models. The typewriter was used at Ohio State University right to read for an adult reading lesson. It helped the students that were reading too fast to slow down and study each word closely. Oh yeah. I'm reading it here on page 585 on jstor.org. The I and motor coordination needed to locate the correct letter on the keyboard, the sensory involvement of touching and pushing that key, and the satisfying thwack, heard when the key strikes the paper all help to reinforce neurologically the basic tasks beginning readers must learn. Some of the skills that the typewriter helps improve are discriminating between capital and small letters, spacing between and within words, improvement in both spelling and form. Crowley and Trenner explain that the novelty of the typewriter motivated students. In other words, students wanted to learn with the typewriter because it was new. Oh, it's coming on the iPad. Yeah, my team. Yeah, yeah, my team. I found a book titled Women's Places at the Typewriter Online. Allow me to read an interesting excerpt from this book. First of all, there was the widespread belief that women were simply and by the very nature of things, inferior to men. In addition, women were often thought to be working for pin money with which to make frivolous purchases. Since they were not thought to be supporting themselves or their families, there was nothing the matter with paying them low wages. Then there was the argument that women were not serious members of the labor force. They would be returned into an exclusively domestic life either as soon as they married, or, at the latest, as soon as they bore children. Such transient workers did not deserve higher wage with which an employer might try to attract and keep a more steadfast male worker. Finally, women's depressed wages did drive them back into the home, where they again became available to fill a subordinate position within the domestic division of labor. Whether or not this worked to the ultimate benefit of men, it certainly provided them with short-term benefits. That is an interesting perspective indeed. It seems that the invention of the typewriter both liberated and further limited women. In any case, the typewriter had an impact on literacy even if it was accompanied with some setbacks or cultural tensions as it became integrated in society's existing preconception. Looking over the impact of the typewriter on literacy in North America, it is interesting to know that, although the typewriter existed in Asia in many forms and versions of its creation existed prior to Remington No. 2, it had the most noticeable impact on the development of female literacy in North America. Why is that? Aside from the invention, the time and tendency in society or cultural movement is crucial for the manifestation of a change, which is never entirely enabled, but often facilitated by a particular invention. In this case, the typewriter did not directly improve literacy or even create jobs for women. But I thought that you said it did. I mean that the cultural development and movement was moving in this direction with or without the typewriter. The typewriter's contribution was acceleration or facilitation of the movement towards literacy. Ooh, I go up. I go make a vision. It helps literacy even more than typewriter. I do make. I want to make something to help. The people and then with a type what? Yeah, but you know. <laughs> the typewriter's contribution was acceleration or facilitation of the movement towards literacy. The typewriter continues to impact literacy today for one could argue that it also gave birth to the modern day keyboard that we continue to use on laptops and desktops as well as the modified version of a touchscreen keyboard that we find on tablets and phones. Further studies in it to correct and work prediction in touchscreen keyboards as a continuation of the invention of the typewriter and its effects on literacy may be interesting to future educators and students.